As some of you know, I'm creating a series of presentations that expose multiple fatal flaws in evolutionary theory. And one of the impossibilities that's rarely addressed is the origin of complex animal instincts. Now, generally, when an evolutionary proposal is made, the only consideration is the origin of a structure in terms of altered anatomy. For example, how did a bird develop the physical capacity to fly? Things like hollow bones, wings, feathers. Little or no thought is given as to how the instinctive ability to fly could have been created through a purely materialistic process. An evolving wing could not have been preserved by natural selection unless coincidental mutations also appeared to result in a novel behavior to use the acquired anatomy. However, the issue of the origin of instincts, coincident with structural modifications, is generally minimized or ignored. And this represents a gross oversimplification of biologic reality. Instincts are found in all forms of animal life and are vital to survival. A computer is useless without an operating system. Instincts can be viewed as an operating system to allow the organism to survive. Even an amoeba, which is a form of single cell life, it utilizes instinctive behavior to discriminate whether or not a particle is edible and should be consumed. So what is the biologic explanation for the origin of instincts? And how is an instinct encoded into DNA? It's believed that many nucleotide sequences interacting with other sequences determine the complex instinctive behavior of animal life. These genes direct the creation of a specific network of interconnecting neurons and muscle cells, integrated or wired together to result in innate behaviors. Also, genes specify the synthesis of specific control substances that excite the neuromuscular network to result in a fixed pattern of behavior under appropriate circumstances. And the creation of such a system resulting in an instinctive behavior has not been squarely addressed from an evolutionary standpoint. Remember, for the creation of the ability to fly in a bird, it's not enough to achieve the correct anatomy. An instinct must also be added, and this requires the changing of specific sequences of DNA. Now, to quickly review the proposed mechanism of how all evolution allegedly created every complexity of nature, all you need is random mutations that is, mistakes in DNA replication at the time of reproduction, plus natural selection plus millions of years. For example, to create a flying bird with feathers from a terrestrial dinosaur with scales, you need a population of about 10,000 individuals and 175 million years of mutations in natural selection. So keep this mechanism in mind. Now, when attempting to explain the origin of instincts through evolution, Generally, only very simple examples are given, and even these can't be justified in terms of actual laws of biology. For example, Richard Dawkins, whose specialty is animal behavior, offered this explanation. How does learned behavior evolve into inherited instinct? But there is a very interesting theory about how that happens and why it happens. It's called the Baldwin effect. In the Baldwin effect, the idea is that an animal learns, for example, some skill. A good example might be uh, thrushes, which smash snails, smash the shells of snails and then eat them. And the closely related blackbirds don't do this. Uh, if you give a blackbird a snail that's been taken out of its shell, it's very happy to eat it. But a blackbird hasn't the faintest idea how to uh, smash a snail, whereas thrushes do it all the time. They do it on so-called anvils. Now, uh, the Baldwin effect idea would be that some ancestral bird, ancestral to thrushes, learned how to smash snails, a very, perhaps a very skilled bird, a very clever individual bird that learned how to smash snails, and then uh, maybe other thrush, other thrush ancestors copied it. They also learned how to smash snails and got rewarded for it. And so they learned and learned and learned. And as the generations went by, the ones who learned fastest were the ones who got the most food. And so any genetic tendency to be fast at learning how to smash snails would have been favored by natural selection. And so natural selection, by choosing genes over many generations, would eventually build into the gene pool a skill which started out as a learned skill. In other words, Dawkins is saying that there's really no such thing as instinct. Everything is learned. 
and offspring progressively get faster and faster at learning intelligence looks like an instinct. And in the end, they would learn so fast that they wouldn't need to learn at all, and then you might call it an instinct, and that would be the full Baldwin effect. So the Baldwin effect would be a way in which a learned habit can get built into the gene pool as an instinct by natural selection of genes. Notice that Dawkins is avoiding the fundamental question. How does learned behavior change the genetic code sequences in the offspring? He says it's built into the gene pool through natural selection and hopes that you'll use your imagination to fill in the blanks. In other words, characteristics that are acquired during life can be passed on to the offspring by somehow changing its DNA over millions of years. Now, this idea was advanced by Lamarck in the early 1800s, and it's been universally rejected over 100 years ago as impossible. Superficially, the Baldwin effect sounds like Lamarckism. Lamarck was the French naturalist predating Darwin, who had a theory of evolution which was based upon the inheritance of acquired characteristics. And that's wrong. That doesn't happen or almost certainly doesn't happen. But the Baldwin effect produces something which looks like Lamarckism and is therefore very interesting. Acquired characteristics, something that an animal learns, are not automatically incorporated in the genes. That would be Lamarckism. If the learned habit just was pumped straight into the genes. But the way it happens is not like that. The way it happens in the Baldwin effect is that there must be some genetic variation in there which affects the rate of learning this particular habit, or even the rate of learning generally. And that is what's being naturally selected. So it's not that the, that the habit gets pumped into the genes. What happens is that there is spontaneous variation among the birds in proper Darwinian fashion, ultimately due to mutation. Variation in ability to learn a habit such as this and then natural selection favors those individuals who learn fastest, until in the end they learn so fast that it looks as though they haven't learned at all. I hope you can see the contradictions here. He says that behaviors acquired during life are not automatically incorporated into genes. They're gradually incorporated into genes over millions of years, ultimately through mutations. In other words, Dawkins is saying that there is no such thing as a true instinct. Everything is learned. Now, this is a direct denial of biologic fact, and there's really no excuse for this, especially coming from a biologist whose specialty is animal behavior. Now, the Baldwin effect that Dawkins refers to is simply dogma. It was advanced in the 19th century to justify evolution, long before DNA was understood. Yet this is how evolutionists explain the origin of instincts, by a rejection of modern biology and the imagination that acquired characteristics change the offspring's DNA over millions of years. So let's apply the Baldwin effect to the evolution of instincts in sea turtles. Turtle hatchlings have no direct contact with their parents and act out instinctive behavior immediately upon birth. And here are some of those instincts. First, all hatchlings wait until all the one to 200 eggs of a clutch are hatched. Then they all leave at once, assuring safety in numbers. Second, all hatchlings directly race to the ocean instead of in a random direction. And third, while the hatchlings are moving toward the ocean, their brains are being imprinted with magnetic forces of the Earth, along with the ability to sense directional vectors along the surface of the Earth. And this allows them to be able to navigate years later to the same beach through another complex instinct. Now to those who believe in evolution, I'll pose this question. How were these complex instincts acquired? And be specific, how does rapid learning explain any of these behaviors? Are you suggesting that when a hatchling leaves the burrow, it's rapidly learning to wait for all the other hatchlings to assure safety in numbers? And when the temperature drops a couple of degrees signaling night, does the hatchling rapidly learn that this is the safest time to leave the burrow? And does it rapidly learn how to go in the correct direction toward the ocean? What is inferred by these explanations is that instincts don't exist, that everything is learned. Now, some evolutionary biologists might concede that these behaviors weren't actually acquired through ancestral learning, but through selection of pre-existing variations. What variations? A variation that has pre-programmed a turtle to travel in a specific direction as opposed to a random direction, as with virtually all barriers to evolution. Proposed explanations are based entirely on imagination. 
and require the acceptance of mathematical impossibilities. Remember, many of the anatomic changes created through evolution would be useless unless instincts also evolved, and these involved substitution of multiple nucleotide sequences. So what I'm saying is this, for example, the skin appendage just happened to be modified through mutations to result in an early feather. And by the way, this event would be facing an improbability of one in billions. And at the same time, other mutations coincidentally occurred that resulted in the animal's instinctive ability to flap its wings. So to put this in perspective, it's possible to win the lottery once. It's not possible to win the lottery multiple times in succession. Now, the origin of complex instincts is not just unexplained. It's ignored. It's pretended that there are answers when there are none. It's treated as a minor detail that's not fully understood. Now, you might hear that there are many examples of mutations that create instincts. You'll hear that the temperaments of domestic animals can be altered through selection of variations. Hence, complex instincts can be created over millions of years. This is yet another extravagant extrapolation that cannot be applied to biologic systems. The tempering of the aggressiveness of a dog involves regulation of neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin. However, the creation of a novel instinct, such as the capacity of a bee to make honey, or the complex social integration of a functioning hive, these require changes in genetic code sequences, not the simple regulation of neurotransmitters. Now, you might be told that epigenetic changes can account for acquired traits in life, specifically behaviors. Don't be deceived by this. This is just another smokescreen that avoids the fundamental question. How do sequences of nucleotides appear in DNA to result in an instinct? I hope you'll seriously consider the challenges I'm making. Now, remember, instincts are essential to all forms of animal life, and evolutionary biologists have no plausible explanation for their origin from a mathematical standpoint. However, they seem certain that every complex behavior originated entirely through undirected means without any designing intelligence. This is yet another evidence that evolution is a religion that wears the mask of science. Thank you again for your interest in these videos. I hope that you'll subscribe to my channel. There will be many more topics which I'll be exploring in the future.